Anyways. Uh, okay, so let's just get into this. I'm, I'm nervous, not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> so, um... Fuck, what do we call this? Okay, so l let's call this... The Mentality... The Mentality... Needed... Needed... To... And then in a different color, Grind. Yeah. Right? Okay. So the Mentality Needed to Grind. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, if you have any uh, input as to like what it is that maybe you do in the certain things that we talk about, um, feel free to add that. And uh, I, I think I'm gonna move down. I'm gonna move this way. Okay, yeah, let's do it like this, like a slideshow. Um, okay, so uh, this is gonna be organized into five topics, right? So one is grinding for me. Oh god, okay. For me. Okay. And then two is gonna be, um, do I have the time needed? Do I have the time? So let's just say, do I have the time? Right? And then we go to uh, stacking, right? Which I'm sure if you had a session with me, you, you know how I feel about that. So stacking, right? Um, then we go on to the actual process of VOD reviewing. Okay. And then we go on to probably the one that most people deal with, or at least struggle with. And that'd be tilt. Right, so we're gonna be um, we're talking quite a bit in depth on each of these things. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. But yeah, so let's start off with is grinding for me, okay? And then I'm gonna here. Th this is this is me, okay? Th this is me. Uh... Big disgusting gamer neck, right? This is the average gamer, okay? And then you need like a V-neck that's like kind of like crinkled because you haven't really you've had the V-neck for a really long time. It's probably a size too small. You should probably get a higher, like a a bigger uh, size shirt. You have glasses too. Of course you have glasses. You have astigmatism. Really bad astigmatism. There's like a period in elementary school where like you didn't actually like have glasses and you had to stand like three feet away from the whiteboard. You have acne too, right? Uh, big old nose, right? And then you have like these spindly little arms, right? Hold on. Spindly little arms, and then here's your little keyboard, right? So let's maybe give yourself beautiful little hands like that. You're also left-handed. There's your mouse. <laughs> yep. You got a bit of muscle on this hand. We don't know why. We don't know why specifically the right arm you have more muscle, but... <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm drawing myself. There's your keyboard. There's your keyboard that has like fucking like <laughs> like ten buttons on it. There's your hand, and yeah, that that's uh that's you. And there's your desk, right? Yeah, there we go. And you don't have a monitor, I guess. Maybe you play like twenty feet away from your monitor. There we go. You play like twenty feet away from your monitor. You use mouse and keyboard on console. That's what th that's what this is. You you're, you have mouse and keyboard on console. Okay. That's a pretty good pick of how. Come on, man. Don't roast how like that. I thought this election not a roast me. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so you play 20 feet away from your mind. This is you. This is grinding for this person right here. Is this, is this for you? Okay. So. Uh, now. Let me just get back to my notes here. Okay. So the first thing you need to ask yourself 
if you want to grind, right? The very first thing that you need to ask yourself is, do I enjoy the game? Okay. Do I enjoy the game as it is, right? So like right now, as it is, right? Okay. Now this sounds like a dumb question, but here's the thing. I I've gotten a lot of people who, um, being that I've worked with like a lot of students, boy needs some cable management. Yeah, I definitely do. Uh, <laughs> Um, being that I've worked with a lot of students, I I've had a lot of uh, opportunities to like talk to people about like their struggle, and um, a lot of the times, sometimes you'll you'll run into like one tricks or something, and they'll say like, "Ah, oh, I just hate this meta. Oh, I just um, this meta is so boring. It's it's a, it's frustrating. I did not mean to go back. There we go. Um." The, the, yeah, so the, the meta is boring. I'm just not enjoying my character. I, I'm not really having fun with any of the heroes that like maybe I want to learn. I don't really have any real motivation to play. You probably don't want to grind, right? So, okay, so no. And then that equals no grind, right? Th that's like the most basic thing. That like anybody can be like again we're, we're starting off very basic here but like this we're gonna be like um we're gonna be going through this like a checklist where it's like if there's any one of these things that you mark no on you probably shouldn't be grinding right or at least you should limit your expectations of it um if you don't enjoy the game it is don't play comp don't grind um i mean you can play comp but it's just like you can't really expect anything out of it you can't really expect to get better like you have to, at the minimum, enjoy the game even when you're losing, right? Um, now, that's where we go on to the next part, right? Do you... Whoops. Do you... Only have fun... Fun. Do you only have fun when you win? Right? Now... If you only, so this is the thing, you should really ask yourself this, and I feel like a lot of people don't, like, properly ask themselves this, like, if they have fun, like, only when they're winning. And if you, if you come to the answer and say, like, yeah, I really don't have fun unless I'm winning, you should probably not try to grind, right? Um, part of the grind is understanding that, um, if you don't have fun, like just with the game at at the base level, right? Y you probably shouldn't be playing the game, right? You probably shouldn't be taking it seriously. Um, it it's really important for you to be like, ah, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that there. Um, okay, so then now the last thing that I wanted to go over, and again, this is where we're, this is where it gets like we're done with the basic stuff, right? After this, um, do you? think the game will get more fun at a higher rank, right? So let's just say higher rank for the sake of brevity here. Higher rank equals fun. Okay. So the thing is, is that being at a higher rank doesn't make the game more fun, to be honest with you. Um, if you expect, like, maybe you have, like, better teammates at a higher rank, or um, maybe less throwers, or it's going to be less toxic, or the gameplay is just going to be better... It's not really going to get that much better. The, the only thing you'll see that's different is that there are more egos, right? House is false. Yeah, exactly. He knows. Um, or they know. Um, like, if... The, the only thing that'll come up more is maybe, like, hackers, <laughs> right? Um, you, you'll, you'll get a lot more, like, hackers. You'll get a lot more egos because it, people... You have to think of it as, like, this is... This is the person that's playing at Masters, okay? This is who you're coming up against. They don't really have much other than Overwatch at this point, right? Um, once you start getting into those really high ranks, you're going to come up against more of these people. And these people aren't exactly the nicest when they're playing the one thing that they do, right? Or like they, when they're doing the one thing that they're good at, right? Um, so, no, it, it becomes a lot more volatile. Um, you start to see a lot more stranger characters, let, let's say that. Right? So, if you think that the game is going to be more fun at a higher rank, you probably shouldn't, um, you probably shouldn't go in, you, you, should, you probably shouldn't grind with your goal being, I want to get a higher rank, just because it's more fun. 
right? Y you need to understand that it's like your grind has to be for self improvement, right? Um, but we'll, we'll get more into that as we as we go on, right? So now let's go on to the next chapter, time, right? Now, um, do you just play like two to three hours a week, right? Now this is the thing. Um, there are people who get who put in very little time, or at least like not much time. If the meta is against your character, is it still a good idea to get practice on the character if you're still below GM? If you have fun, right? Like, say, if you really only have fun on one or two characters. Yeah, no, go ahead. The thing is, is that if the if you're still having fun even playing counter meta, right? And maybe you're just getting like bashed the shit out of every five seconds, and realistically, you shouldn't. It shouldn't feel fun, but if you're enjoying it just with the fact that you're playing your hero and you enjoy the game and like how it works, then yeah, why not? You, you can keep on grinding because it's like it's not like you can't hit GM on uh, just one tricking, but maybe the journey there will be slower, right? Especially if the character is out of meta, right? You just have to like set your expectations a bit differently here. Um, but yeah, I mean, re realistically, you, you should, yeah, as long as it's not mentally draining. There's no reason why you, you can't just, like, keep playing as long as you're having fun. Um, now, okay, so two to three hours a week. Now, I, I say this as a number because sometimes I, I get people who say, like, oh, I'll play, like, one or two games a day, right? Um, or I'll stop. Okay, here, here's another thing, too. I'll stop. I'll stop after, like, three wins. Right, something like this. That this is something that I always get. Thank you, Hal, for the sub, by the way. Um, I'll stop after three wins. The, the, there's like kind of a. It, it's kind of backwards to think like this, because it's like you need to be thinking about it as like, okay, is the person who's playing like, let's say, if you have like a graph here. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sure, let's say ten. Right. Um, this is the person playing three games a week, uh, three games a day. Right. So they play here. They play three three wins a day. One win and then stop. Yeah, that's the true way to play. You just play one win and you stop. Uh, mathematically, you'll be in GM. Uh, <laughs> like in like three or four months. I don't know. But um, anyways. You um the, the thing that you need to consider here is that it's like it's not necessarily good like th this is where okay this is where we're dragging it back to here right do you only have fun with you when you win right it's kind of like if you're just playing to win or if you're just playing for wins you might not actually be getting better because think of it as like let's say you're playing and I, I'm gonna relate this to soccer because I, I used to play soccer um you, you need to think of it as like what if I was to play? What what if I was to practice my free kicks? Okay. What if I was to practice my free kicks, and I would stop after I hit three, maybe like five uh, top corner shots, right? Sure, I, I hit I hit five, but the like, I'm not actually practicing the skill that I wanted to practice for that day. Right, and it's like if you go into the day saying, let's say uh, you want to practice your, um, what can we talk about? Let's say, let's say you're a, a Zarya. I think Zarya is like probably the easy, easiest example here. So let's say Zarya bubbles, right? Let's say you play three wins. So that's in in Overwatch terms with like Q, uh, with the Q in mind, that's probably what like 14 hours of play, right? Or 14 hours of like being in Overwatch, like in the menus, waiting for a game, something like that. Uh, no, but in actuality, it's probably like you're playing for at most like an hour, right? Uh, maybe two, maybe an hour and a half, 90 minutes, right? About 90 minutes. Now, what if there's somebody who puts in like two to three hours a day, right? Now, they're gonna be, maybe they don't win three, like so. This is wins. And then this is like, I guess, time. Sure. That's it. So they stop here. Now, let's say, what if this person gets like two and then they drop down to like, they go negative, they come up, 
maybe they come back down and they finish negative, like a negative 50, let's say. They're down 50, right? Who do you think is going to improve at the, at the skill more if you do this, like now if we drag this out, right? If we drag this out and make this, instead of over the course of a day, we make this over the course of a week, right? This person is gonna be practicing the skill much more than somebody who just plays for three wins at a time. Yes, they may not gain as much SR, but it's very likely that over time, they are gonna get better at the skill over time, right? Whereas this person who's practicing like a little bit, they're sure they get three wins, but the wins don't necessarily translate to the skill getting better. Like it, it, they might, they might lose the next day, right? And then if they lose one match and then they stop, they're getting worse. They're getting rustier and rustier and rustier and rustier, and they're not enforcing good habits. So that's where it's like when you want to grind, you have to think long term, right? So that's where we come back to time, right? Time has to be like a long term process, right? Grinding is a long term thing. And it's not like long term doesn't mean like a week, right? Long term doesn't mean a week. Like it means potentially could take months, right? To get to the whatever rank it is that you want to get to or to whatever uh, level of skill it is that you want to get. Um, you can't just sit there and be like, huh, I've been practicing all day. This ain't fair. Huh. Like that's not gonna, that doesn't mean shit, right? right? So you have to think of the competition that you're facing. As you get higher and higher up the ranks, it's gonna take, it takes more of an investment of time to actually maintain those ranks or surpass them, right? So it's really important that you, you put in that time. Ideally, if you wanna see like the fastest rate of improvement possible, um, generally you would like to play about 15 hours a week, which is about two hours a day, right? About, right? So 14, give or take, that works too. But um, it's about two hours a day. That's not too much of an ask, right? Do you see people who climb with less? Yes, 100%. 100%. Do you see people who climb with more or maybe who don't climb with more? Yeah, 100%, right? But the thing is that, again, grinding isn't like a, it's not something that you're entitled to. You're not entitled to actually like climb just because you're grinding. Um, but yeah, and, and again, it's also the mentality and what you're practicing and how effective, um, how how properly it is that you're practicing, right? Like um, your time isn't wasted on something. Now, an another thing to consider too, is that within this time, what you want to be thinking is like this is some baby music bro what is this kirby's pad epic yarn yeah, okay that makes sense anyways um <laughs> so you can imagine right th th there are some people who talk about um like oh i'm a flex player i'm a flex god right now the, the thing about this is that if you split this two hours a day into three different roles maybe you're getting about like 45 minutes a roll, let's say, right? And if you maybe get like two games out of tank, you get, um, you, you don't find a match on DPS because the, the the queues are that long. And then maybe you get like two matches out of, uh, out of support, right? Okay, so maybe one match on DPS. Um, like if you play like this, you have to understand that it's like, now you're not only, like, now, now if we narrow this down to, like, role-wise, like, improving on your role, you gotta be thinking, like, am I actually improving on the role that I really want to improve on, right? Because it's like, if, if you play DPS, but it takes so long to get, like, your cues, and so you decide, uh, I just want to keep playing, I'm gonna play some support, or uh, I'm gonna play tank, you're not really building habits that are for the heroes you want to build, that, or that, that you want to improve on. So it's like, it's really important that you're investing your time properly and saying, right, okay, I might take longer queues. Maybe one day you play for the priority passes now because that's like a new thing. That That's that's fine. Play like one day for the priority passes. It's not going to kill you. Um, and then the rest of the days you just play primarily on DPS and then maybe you get like three or four matches on DPS a day out of this two hours that you have per day to play, right? That at least is a better investment of your time then splitting it into things like this, right? Um, now we can also consider splitting it into time in um, in things like quick play. 
quick play or arcade, right? Ideally, you'd like to cut those out. Um, you can also consider like uh, free for all, right? Um, if you want to, like, okay, so let's say try hard, try hard FFA. This is really good for like improving your aim, but is it something that you want to spend like two hours on? Maybe not, unless if your goal for that day is to improve your aim, then, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But even then, I, I it, it can be very strenuous uh, doing that for non-stop, I like, because you don't really have downtime uh, when you're just in tryhard FFA. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go against playing 15 to 20 minutes of that, right, a day, right, if that's what you can handle. Again, you play what you can handle. Um, and maybe you scale it based on the amount of time that you actually have, right? So if you have like three hours, maybe you'll play 15 to 20 minutes try hard. Maybe you have two hours, maybe you'll play 10 to 15, right? Who knows, right? Again, it, it's down to what's comfortable for you. But it, it's just important that it's like if you want to improve your aim or whatever specifically, then this would make sense. But you could scale it up, scale it down, but whatever. But the point is, is that you have to be using, you have to be setting the time properly based on your goal, right? So, um, I don't think there's anything else I want to add on to that. That, that. This was meant to be shorter, but I ended up like elaborating a bit more. Uh, anyways, so let's go on to the next part. We're going to go on to stacking. Is it good or bad for climbing? Is it, is it good for grinding? For grinding? No. Right, so grinding, ideally you don't want to. Right. Uh, the... There's a lot of reasons for this, um, but we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Now, is it good for climbing? Probably. Slash yes. Right. Now, this is the thing. Um, again, you have to establish your goals, right? Grinding is kind of something that you want to be doing on your own, right? It's something where you have to be divoting... Yeah, divo diverting a lot of time into specifically your improvement right um now with grinding uh where was i going with this i forgot what i was going with this yes okay so climbing stacking with people is good in the short term but you have to think about it is like if you get removed out of that group with like let's say maybe have one player that's like carrying right or maybe you're the carry who knows this it can go both ways if you're the carry for one thing, if you're playing with like lower ranked players, you you there's a good chance you'll build lower ranked habits because you're playing in lower ranks, right? Now, alternatively, if you're playing with higher ranked players and you're the lower ranked player, yeah, you you might build slightly better habits, right? But the the issue is is that once you get removed from that uh, environment where you're with higher ranked players who maybe are carrying you, because again, like. They, especially if they're playing uh, on like an alt account and like that's not their main account or whatever, you can run the risk of like being in a situation where you are depending a bit too much on their communication, right? And it's kind of like a culture shock being like thrust out of that, where it's like you go into solo queue and like maybe you have like one person that's accidentally joined team chat, and like you have to kind of fend for yourself here. That's where it's like you might go on like a drop, right? Um, so yes, climbing. If you want to climb. Yeah, I guess you can stack, but the thing is, is that you, it's gonna, it's not gonna be as good for your improvement, right? There, there's lots of factors into it. Um, so yeah, the the main thing is that ideally with solo queuing, right? So ideally you want to solo queue. So solo queue, right? So the, the the reasoning for this is this, right? One, it's harder, right? Um, so accused chat exactly yes it is for chats uh so it, it is harder right you can think of it as like if you're doing homework um thank you to turtle man for uh that da data turtle man data turtle man thank you Deter data data turtle man for the follow um yeah so solo queue is harder right and uh, along with that you can think that it's like it makes you more independent right now what this does too like specifically about independence is that for one thing you're relying on your own comms right or like okay not not, uh, not your own comms but you're relying on your own observations right your own observations right let's say obs um you're relying on your own observations so it's like it's kind of forcing you to make decisions based off of the info you gather 
right? Rather than relying on somebody else's callouts or relying on somebody else's um, playmaking ability, right? Or relying on somebody else's like strategic um, ideas, right? You, you're re you're entirely relying on yourself based off of like what you see from your team, what you see from the enemy, where you are on the map, where you're positioned. Yeah, so it's harder, makes you more independent. Now, alternatively, what, what we can be thinking about this too is like if, if like you're taking a test, Monster Hunter Rise is amazing. I've heard that's good. Um, I'm taking notes. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Um, yeah, so, uh, y you can be thinking where, uh, god, I completely lost what I was gonna say. Yeah, okay. So, in school, right, if you're taking a test, generally, the homework is harder than the test, right? You'll get, like, these really hard practice problems, unless if your teacher is a, <laughs> a sick, sick person and they make the homework nothing to do with the test, and, um, I, I know sometimes that happens, but we ignore that. Um, ideally... The homework is harder than the test so that you're prepared for the test, right? It's it's the same thing here, right? Where it's like, you solo queue, it's harder on yourself, but then once you get the matches that are actually coordinated, or maybe even scrims, right? Maybe even you're in scrims, you have more of an idea of how it is that you can manage things on your own before you even have to deal, um, before you even have to, um, like, depend on somebody else's comms, right? Um, now, as for solo queue, what also helps is, what al what's also good about it is, again, the MMR thing that we were talking about uh, earlier, right? So the MMR is more reflective of you, right? So let's just say you, right? Uh, let's say your MMR, right? And when you're stacking, what happens is that it's like, you, you might not want to believe it, but it's like when you're stacking with other people, it's averaging everybody's, let's say you stack with like four people, it's taking an average of everybody's MMR and it's putting you at an estimated rank, right? To play in, right? And, and, and the idea is that it's like what, what, what people don't really want to like focus on here is that that estimated rank does not necessarily reflect you, right? And this is the thing too. Uh, a lot of people um, will also come and say, Oh, but my friends also have the mentality to climb. The thing is that if they have the mentality to climb, great. Even then, you'd still like to learn how to play on your own, right? Even then, you'd still like to learn how to have that independence. Um, it's again, if your if your goal is to just like if you want to have fun, by all means, stack. It's probably more fun than grinding on your own. But um, if you wanna. If you want to stack with friends, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's just like, ideally, it, the, the fastest way to improve, and again, not to climb, to improve is to grind because you're putting yourself in a harder situation. So the, the idea is that it's like when, when you're stacking with people, you get the average MMR. When you're solo, you get your reflective MMR, right? And the idea is that from here, you're also making it so that it's like every single match that comes after is directly as a result of your play right i think you guys get the gist of this already but it's like the, the idea is that it's like it with like if you're playing well you're more likely to get better opponents like if you are yeah if you're playing well you're more likely to get better opponents like especially if you're winning right if you get better opponents then great right y you're gonna get um that's why sometimes you'll see like you're maybe the only plat player in a diamond game Right, maybe the game is like sliding you to a higher MMR just to like test you there, and you, it's it's a better challenge rather than being at an average that like might not even be close to your own MMR. Alternatively, if you're playing bad, or maybe it just wants to push you up in rank or something, maybe they'll put you in a bunch of like lower ranked games that you can 100% just carry through. Right, and although it feels a little bit more random, it, it's something where it's like. You don't really want to have to depend on your teammates consistently playing at this MMR. You don't want to consistently rely on your teammates playing at this MMR in order to maintain this MMR. You'd rather just be like, you are the only variable here, right? Where it's like, for one thing, you don't really know if this guy's grinding as hard as you are. Maybe this guy's grinding more than you. Maybe this guy isn't grinding at all, right? Who knows? But then again, ultimately, if we want to take something out of this, it's... If you want to have fun, stack. That's fine. But just limit your expectations. Um, you may climb in the short term, 
but long term it's going to be hard. Um, lo long term, if you try to solo queue, it's going to be it, it might be a bit rough. Uh, solo queuing is just getting the hard shit out of the way now, and just learning how to put yourself into the deep end and um, how to improve in that regards. Okay. Uh, now, next thing, this is where we start going into the juicy stuff. Okay. Now, VOD reviewing. Um, you have to think about it like this, right? This is the thing about VOD reviewing. There's always like three... I'd say there's maybe three or four complaints that I always get about VOD reviewing. Or three or four counter arguments. Or three or four common like uh, common sayings, let's say that. One, yeah, I VOD review every now and then. You get that. You get two. Ah, VOD reviewing is so boring, it takes too long. Or three... I don't even know where to look, man. Like I, I'm, I'm playing fine, I think, but I don't even know where to start, right? Those are the three most common things that I always hear as a coach, right? So let, let, let's start with let, let's start with understanding why you need to vote review. So why, right? Why do I need the vote review, right? So speaking of where I said we're getting into the juicy stuff, we're gonna talk about boogers, right? We're gonna talk about boogers. And then this is you picking your nose. There's your nail. This is looking like something else, isn't it? Whatever. Uh, let's just move on. Um, yeah, anyways, so let's... Okay. Um, yeah, so th the idea is that it's like you won't get embarrassed from eating your boogers. Unless you get caught eating your boogers. You need somebody to look at you eating your boogers like a degenerate, right? They need to record you and be like, bro, you're disgusting. What's wrong with you? You freak. What is wrong with you? At that point, you'll be embarrassed. And then next time you you, you, you try to dig for some gold, um, you'll probably have second thoughts. That You have that gut feeling of like, mm, don't know about that. That's exactly what you're trying to look out for here. Wait, that, that's a tr that's exactly the feeling that you're trying to develop when you vaude review, right? Or like when you're playing, rather. That's the feeling you're trying to develop when you play. But you can only get this feeling, you can only develop this feeling by vaude reviewing, right? Now, the issue is that now, yeah. So th the idea is that you need to keep on watching your vaude reviews back. So let's say watch reviews over and over until um, until you, you feel like embarrassed almost right and that's a strong word here but it's kind of the truth right like the, the reason pro players VOD review is so that when they see their mistakes they just the Right? They, they keep... They, you have to expose yourself to the to mistakes over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Until you get to that point where when you're playing, you think you're going to go for that play. Or that thing, that, that, that bad habit that you're going to do. And then you feel that pit... That, that, that stomach. That, that thing in your stomach where you're just like, mm, Nope. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. If you don't have that feeling... It's going to be very hard for you to actually like start climbing, right? Because it's like a lot of times you're making the same mistakes over and over and over and over and over again. But it's like, and then you, what, what happens too? I found this happened to me a lot when I was trying to climb back in the day. I would tell myself like, oh, I can't keep, I can't keep doing this. Why do I keep, why do I keep on doing this? And you keep on going. You're still doing it, right? You're still doing it and you're not going to stop until you actually break the habit by forcing yourself and sitting yourself down to watch that one mistake that you're doing over and over and over again, right? Like, keep rewinding a bad play until you get sick from it. Um, not necessarily. I mean, maybe to some effect that would, like, torture you, I guess, but that's not exactly what the, you're trying to go for here. Um, it's more so that it's, like, you want to, like, if you're focusing on one thing, if you're focusing on, again, like, we can just go back to sorry bubbles. Let's say you keep on using your projected bubble um, at, like, the wrong time. Like, when there's, like, no aggression. Let's say that. Um, 
and you know there's no aggression there and you know that there's no aggression you, you need to keep on exposing yourself like because that's the thing when you're grinding and you're trying to focus on one problem you you focus on that one problem until you actually get like until you're comfortable with it until you're like okay i think i'm i'm, I'm done with this problem i can move on to something else right or i think i'm um, i think I, I think i've fixed this problem so it's like you need to keep on watching that same type of issue that you're making in your play whether it's in the same one map or it's on every single vod that you decide to review um you need to keep on watching it until you get rid of that until you get that gut feeling and you feel like okay I, I can't do this while you're in game. When you get that gut feeling in game, um, so rewinding a bad play, I wouldn't really say it's like the best use of your time because at that point you could just be moving on to another play. You know, um, yeah, you don't need to spend that much time on a play. But the point is, is that you you need to like you're gonna keep on doing that thing if you don't expose yourself to that same thing over and over and over again. Uh, whether it's from like it, it should be from different um, different perspectives and different maps, but it's like it's the same core issue. Uh, no, what was the next thing I did? Yeah, okay, so that was that. So now the next thing that we address here is it's boring. Right? And I'm sure I've talked to you guys about this. Um, to anybody who's had a session with me, I'm sure I've talked to you guys about how long your VOD review should actually last. Um, th there's like a big misconception with people like about VOD reviewing where it's like, oh, well, I need to like VOD, I need to have like a VOD reviewing day, right? Maybe VOD reviewing day where it's like, maybe you spend like two hours VOD reviewing, um, learning, not boring SMH my head. Yeah. <laughs> well, for some people it is. Yeah. Um, especially when they don't know what it is that they're looking for. Um, VOD reviewing can be boring because it's like you're just kind of just like watching the gameplay and you're just like, great, I don't know what I'm doing here. I, I want to play. Um, you don't need to be p spending two hours of VOD review per day. Like, it's literally like you, you start you start your day and you're going to hop on the Overwatch like 15 minutes before, right? When you're having breakfast or something or dinner or lunch or whatever it is, whenever it is that you play or snack, whatever. You just watch back a VOD. 15, 20 minutes, right? Watch back a VOD. And you just look at what it is that you're doing. And then from there, right, that's when you can start going into how it is that we, we actually find, um, like, what to start looking for. But we'll go into that next. The, the idea is that you can't... The VOD reviewing will be boring if you make it cumbersome, right? And the thing is, is that, like, especially when you don't have much... For, for people who don't have much time to play... Um, and they think that VOD reviewing, you need to spend like quite a ton of time on it. You really don't. But the, the, the key thing is, especially when you're just trying to focus on one thing, if you're focusing on one thing at a time, you don't need to spend that much time focusing on that one thing. You just need to look at it enough to the point where it's like, right, okay, I know what I need to work on today. This is what I'm going to work on. Let's go, right? And normally that'll take about 15, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. Even then, that's a bit much in my opinion. Honestly, just pick back one of the losses from the day before, right? Uh, pick a loss from the day before, and then you just go and um, just watch it back. It's not really anything that big of an issue. And I ideally, you, you try to watch a game from the day before, and you don't do your VOD review um, after your uh, your session of like playing. Because like after that session of playing, you're, you're mentally like a bit drained. Might be a little bit tilted even. You might not be truly objective with your gameplay. So give it the night, rest on it, wake up the next day, and then do your VOD review and then play. Um, so now the third thing. I don't know where to start looking for mistakes. So let's say, where do I start? Okay. So for one thing, this is like probably one of the I'd say if there's anything uh, for students that like I have encountered it's probably this one that I get the most of and especially considering that it's like if they're buying a coaching session or if they're just like asking coaches for stuff it's like this is um this just makes sense because it's like they don't know where to start that's why they're asking uh, a coach um but they do have the intent to learn um 
So it's like, the, the idea is, let me, let me go back to my notes here. Okay, so if you want to start, if you want to have an idea of where to start looking, the idea is that you need to focus on the obvious ones first, right? Obvious first, right? So that's, um, that's you walking into the enemy as McCree on your own without your team. That's you using abilities on accident. That's you um, standing out in the middle of the open uh, without any cover. That's you. Um, that's you maybe whiffing. I wouldn't say whiffing because whiffing happens to people. Um, that, that that that's you using an ultimate when nobody's there to help, right? Or maybe that's you using an ultimate like what were you panic ults and you ult just before you die just to like try to get something out, and like the fight's already get done. That's that type of thing. Um, maybe you just die using your ult instantly, and it's like, hmm, why did I? Oh, my team's not with me, right? Those type of mistakes first, right? Because once you get those obvious mistakes first, and likely if you make a lot of obvious mistakes, you're probably at a lower rank already. So if you make these changes to the very clear, obvious mistakes that you're making, you'll you'll see quite a bit of um, improvement, right? It's like... Yeah, because it's like a very, it's a very simple thing that you probably do a lot. So why not just cut it out your play, right? So from there, just look at the obvious things that you're doing first and then take those out, right? So we could say like, this is almost like the macro of your gameplay, but th that's like, I, I think that's kind of like the, the wrong term. I'd say like the, the, lar the bigger picture, maybe. So let's say like bigger, let's say bigger errors, right? All right, um, and then from there, you can move to the more nuanced ones, right? And that's where it's like, the the idea is that you, um, yeah, once once you get comfortable working with the um, once you get comfortable in like your situation where it's like, okay, I feel like I'm not making this obvious mistake that I was one making that I was making before. Then you can move on to the the nuanced ones, like the more specific ones. Um, that's where it's like you can address like a key ability, right? So again, if we're focusing on Zarya here, what's going on? What's going on then? What's going on right now? Okay. Anyways, it was like lagging. Um, you can focus on a key ab ability. Now, this is where it's kind of like you have to like. A, a lot of times, people will um, when they're VOD reviewing, they'll, they'll they'll watch like pro players or something, and they'll like um, okay. Actually, let's let's go into that. You should should I be watching pro players, right? Should I watch pros, right? Now this is the thing. Again, pro players have already played to the point where it's like, and they've already vowed you to the point that they're they're not making the same mistakes as you, right? And I think that's something that everybody kind of knows where it's like um, you'll see people um, one thing I'll get a lot from people is um, oh, I'm watching pro player gameplay but it's like it's nothing like my games so I don't even know where to start looking through these pro matches um, yeah so like maybe like overwatch league you're watching or maybe you're watching just like some high levels high, yeah, high level streamer um, no you, you you really shouldn't um, the, the, the thing is is that Again, their mistakes aren't going to be within the context of your environment, right? Um, not only that, it's like you as a player are making much simpler mistakes. And you won't catch your simpler mistakes, right? Unless if you focus on your gameplay, right? You have to focus on your gameplay. So it's much more valuable to actually just focus on your gameplay and look at the dumb mistakes you're making rather than watch pro players and say oh they're making um they're they're using their abilities like this or like that or they're doing certain pushes like this or like that it's much better to just like watch based off of your team like where you are how you can help them the most how you can help yourself the most rather than like trying to conform to like some weird thing that they're doing but like there's again like within their environment they have a knowledge of like the game differently than you the whole team that they're playing on has a different uh, knowledge of the game than you do and that comes from understanding the fundamentals so it's like that's where it's like you can just focus on the fundamentals and the big mistakes first um 
Now, if you want to focus on like key abilities and how you actually focus on these things, right? We could say, I, I, what I like to think here is like, I like to break it down into the who, what, when, where, why, and how, right? Um, and I, I feel like the, the, the thing is, is that th this is where people say like, I don't know where to look, right? Um, th this is where you can start like narrowing it down, right? Where do I start, right? This is where you can start narrowing it down, right? So just pick one ability, pick one thing that you're not good at and think about what needs to improve on it, right? If it's bubbles, right? So it's like, who are you bubbling, right? Uh, what am I bubbling them for? What reason? Right? At when are you trying to do this bubble? Uh, where is this bubble taking place? Uh, why am I bubbling them? And how will the bubble help them in some way, right? Um, again, I'm just coming up with examples here. But the, the point is, is that for these questions, right, that you have, you need to come up with an answer, right? And the thing is, is that right or wrong isn't important here. Right? Right or wrong is not important. The, the point is, is that it's like what you need to be thinking is if you're getting rid of like, the idea is that it's like if, if there's one right answer right here and you're picking all of the wrong ones, right? To so like all of these questions that you're answering, you're like picking every single wrong one. Like I want to try this, then this, then this, then this, then this. You're just getting closer and closer and closer to the right answer, right? That's, that's literally it. The, the point is, is that you just have to like break down these abilities and like focus on it at, on like one ability at a time. It's much easier to understand a hero once you break down the abilities and you break down that hero into much more manageable bite-sized pieces, right? Um, so when you're working on like uh, what should I be doing with a certain hero, you have to, again, you, you, have, to, you have to break it down a bit. Um, and yeah, from there, that's where it's like you, you you watch back your own play to be like... So you basically start by playing, right? So you play, you play, then you watch back, then you ask your questions about your own gameplay, then you play again, and then when you watch, you answer your question. Was that right or wrong? yes or no if not then you try then you go back and you play again and you just rinse and repeat right um let me go back and look at my notes yeah so i mean that that's essentially that um now this is the last thing that we're going to be focusing on with, on with water reading right let me let me get myself some water real quick hold on you can miss 10 minutes because you don't have passes on DPS. Is it affected the VOD review even though you don't have a fresh mind? Good question. Um, you could. You could. But I wouldn't really go too in-depth into it. Or I wouldn't really, like... It, again, it's like it's more like something where it's like, okay, you start the day... Uh, how am I getting back here? What am I doing? Okay. Yeah, like, so if you start the day... Um, yeah. So you start you start your VOD review before the day, you establish your goal for that day, and you say, right, I'm going to be, in your case, Tetris, it would be Genji, right? I'm going to be focusing on not deflecting during that day, um, or not deflecting as much, or like not, de not deflecting at dumb times, right? Short answer, yeah, you could, but it's like you're going to be looking at like that one or two specific moments during the VOD, and you say like, oh, what, what could I have done better here? Oh, okay, I should have done... I should have done this instead. Or, like, maybe, like, during the game, when you thought to yourself, like, oh, what the fuck happened here? I don't even know what happened. Like, that's just you going back to, like, check to confirm what happened. Right? Um, but you're not really trying to do, like, extensive VOD review where you're just, like, asking questions or whatnot. You're just trying to, like, reaffirm where you are, right? And again, you're just, like, highlighting that one issue. And you're just, like, trying to, like, reset yourself to that. Um, so you can just roll through the VOD and look for the thing you're focusing on for that day. Yeah, exactly, right? Um, it doesn't need to be that much because I, I get it, like, post-match you, you can be pretty tilted at times, especially if it was, like, a close loss or it just got steamrolled. Yeah, like, it, it makes sense, like, that you wouldn't really want to focus so much on the VOD. If anything, you can also just, like, queue, get up, and go do something else. 
Um, but ideally you get back before the queue starts and you end up getting AFK'd and disconnected. But, um, it, like, just get get your mind off of the... You just need to really get your mind off of the last match and then go on to the next one. But if you think that you can VOD review without being, like, too stuck up on, like, the last match, not too much of an issue, I would say. Um, no. Uh, okay. So this is the last topic for VOD reviewing, right? So I... I VOD review, let's go back, one different color, I review, but I don't climb. Right? Now, uh, this does happen. And the, the thing is, uh, again, this is like what I was saying at the very beginning, where it's like, um, just because you've been putting in the work doesn't mean that you're entitled to just like climb for that day. Like, you, like the, the the work is like a, it's a long term thing. It's not something that you're gonna get instantly. Um, but for one thing, if you want to make sure that you like, okay, so like sometimes you'll get people who say like, oh, I don't see, I'm not doing any, I'm not, I'm not doing anything wrong, right? So that, that's another thing that people say. I'm not doing anything wrong. Not doing anything wrong, right? Um, that's where it's like, it's really, really important for you to be objective with your gameplay. Right, and that's partly where we go back to that one point where I was saying up here. Um, where was it? Again, you start your VOD review the day after. So it's like, there's less of a chance that you're being like subjective and saying like, Oh, well, this guy's dog shit, man. He called me a, a big wet asshole. Uh, during the game, and that's annoying. So he fucked up, not me. Um, what I do is vaude review with my break. Oh, oh, blah. What I do is vaude review with my breakfast four times a week for about thirty minutes. And if you can handle that, that's that's fine. If you can handle that, that's fine. Um, th that's honestly perfectly fine. Um, ideally, you vaude review every day. But that's like again, if you only play four times, if you only play four times a week, then then that's good. But it's like, um, yeah, I, ideally you try to VOD review every day, just so then like you're you're implementing it more, and you're not taking like off times, or it's like maybe you'll like forget about it or something. I I don't really think like it's that big of an issue in your case, especially since you put in so much time. Um, but yeah, like if if you ideally you try to play it every day, you try to do it every day, but four times a week that's that's honestly enough too, um, especially since you're putting in like thirty minutes into it too. Um, but yeah, be objective with your gameplay, and then, um, this is one thing that a lot of people don't actually, like, talk about much, but it's like, if you genuinely think you did good, right, or let's say, let's say, um, you can't find anything wrong, right, anything wrong. Again, the, the point behind your VOD reading is to set an objective. So it's like, if you can't find anything wrong, find something right. Find what's right about your gameplay. Or find what you perceive as right about your gameplay, right? And, and the idea is that it's like, if you find what's right about your gameplay, and you say, okay, I need to keep doing this. I need to do this more, right? So let's say, do this more, right? And the reason I'm writing down it is kind of important because it's like, do this more because then now you have an objective for the next time, right? You have an objective to say like, okay, my objective is to be uh, taking off angles more, right? And then the next game or the next um, the next session rather, uh, taking, so let's say taking off angles, right? Right? Um, what's going on here? Who told you to stop? Um, yeah, so, so the next, the next time that you play, the next time you've set an objective for yourself, you now have, or, the yeah, the next time you, you've auto, you now have an objective to actually look at, right? You have, like, actual something to work with, where it's like, oh, okay, 
Now I see that I'm not actually taking off angles. That's something that I need to improve based off of what I perceived was right, right? And then if you keep on doing this, right? And let's say maybe you're, um, let's say maybe you identify uh, standing right up your Rhine's asshole as, um, as Brigitte, as Brigitte, right? Which is not ideal. You don't do that. Um, but it's like, let's say, oh, okay, I feel like I need to do this more because I feel like I'm getting value out of it, right? Even if, again, it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. All that matters here is that you're coming up with something. Because once you come up with something, if it's right or wrong, you'll find out later if it's right or wrong. Right? And it's like, from there, that's when it's like, you can see like, ah, uh, I'm... I took my own advice of, I need to be playing in the front line more often as Brig. I need to be the front line Brig. But I'm dying a lot. I'm not actually getting as much value as I thought it was, other than that one game where I just didn't get punished for it. Maybe this isn't right. And then that's when you can reassess, right? That's where it's like you're looking for, like, so it's not just looking for what's wrong with your gameplay. That's the thing about Vodrigging. It's also about looking for what you think is right, especially when you don't know what's wrong. When you don't know what's wrong, look for what's right. And then from there, you can adjust. And, um, yeah, make those adjustments, right? Um,. Yeah, so basically, the, the idea behind your VOD reviewing, especially when you don't understand why you're not climbing, too. Uh, because we, we addressed it like, I don't know. Or we addressed, I don't know, or I'm not doing anything wrong. But we didn't really address that, I don't climb. The thing is, is that you're going to have shitty days, right? It just happens. Um, but again, you, you can't be entitled to... You're, you can't be entitled to thinking that you're going to climb, right, just because you're putting in the work. And another thing that you need to be thinking about, too, is that it's like, you possibly are changing, right? So you could also be changing your play style. And that's like a fundamentally different thing, right? That's like a fundamental, like, that, that's, that could be like a fundamental way that just like works against what you're like used to, what you're accustomed to. So of course you're gonna get things wrong. Of course you're gonna mess up more often, right? And then from there, yes, you'll lose. Yes, you won't climb. It happens, right? And and the, and, and the point is that you have to go through this period of messing up and like, again, assessing and taking all of the wrong answers until you arrive at the correct answer, right? That's all you can really do. Right, so if you can't climb after after you're reviewing, that's fine. Just keep reviewing. You, you need to like understand that it's like maybe you're doing the thing that you thought was right, but maybe you're just doing it wrong, or maybe it's just uncomfortable. Maybe you're forcing it too much. Maybe you're just like not. Maybe you're putting too much attention on that one thing and you're neglecting the other things. Right? Again, in that case, you need to pay attention to that one thing until you're comfortable with it and you can do it on autopilot. Then you focus on the other things. So it's like it's like taking out and putting back in the ingredients to get yourself to that one uh, to that one point where you're satisfied with your gameplay and then you'll start climbing. Um, well, it's not just being satisfied with your gameplay, but you know what I mean. Um, anyways, now, final part. Uh, so th there's multiple things to be like, ex th th this is like a period of like people accepting things, right? Um, or like, sorry, th this, this like, uh, chapter, I guess you want to call it, is like a, a series of things that people need to accept. Um, the one thing, the first thing, is not every match will be a win. Not all matches are wins, right? It's inevitable. You're going to lose. You're going to have losing streaks. Um, what you can take into consideration, right, is the 40-40-20 rule. Right? And this is just like a rule with like any type of like competitive game. The idea is that 40% of your matches will be just like automatic wins. Just like you get carried. Um, whatever. Just the, the enemy team has a thrower, lever, disconnect, or... Um, anything right it's just an automatic win for you 40 percent the other 40 percent is a loss right where you have a lever you have a thrower you have a toxic team you play like absolute shit your team plays like absolute shit who cares right maybe they have a hacker i don't know whatever right unlucky gg go next just keep going and now the 20 percent, it's not actually a tie that's not what that actually is the 20% is where you 
are the difference between winning or losing. Right? And th this is kind of further reinforced by, like, if you look at a top 500 player's uh, win rate, what you'll see is that a lot of them have about, like, 55 to 65% win rates. And, like, if you, again, if you do, like, some simple math here. Ah. Equals about that, right? Um, you win 15 percent of the 20, right? You're gonna end up at 55. Yeah, makes sense, right? Um, th there's nothing really bad about losing, right? It, it happens. It's, it's just something that you you have to go through, right? Um, the the point is is that you need to be focusing on mainly these matches here, right? Focus on this. Right. Focus on these, because these are these you can't really control. There's, there's, there's just sometimes matches you can't control, and that's fine. But it's like the, the matches where it's like independent. It's a or it's like a an evil a level evil even playing field. You should be winning those, right? Um, if you do, or if you don't, then happens. GG go next. Nothing you can do. But um. That the thing is that that one match isn't going to be your last opportunity. You have to think about that, right? Um, you have limited, uh, unlimited opportunities here. It's not like you're running out of time, unless you genuinely are running out of time and like your PC is going to explode or something, or you're, I don't know, moving to someplace without internet and you can't play anymore. Yeah, I guess. But at that point, why would you really care about your rank? Because it's like you're just not going to play anymore. Um, now Smurfs. Whoops. Smurfs. This is something I get a lot too. I get a lot of questions about this. Um, what I like to... I don't know if this is the exact term, but you, you want to be using them as like a litmus test, right? Um, basically, the, the idea is that you need to use the Smurfs that you come up against as like a means of testing yourself for the future, right? Um... For one thing, a lot of times the Smurfs in your games aren't even that high ranked, especially if it's like you're um, in like Plat or something. If you're like in Plat, realistically the Smurf is like probably a high diamond, low masters player, which I'll be honest isn't that good. It's good relative to you, right? Because high masters seems far away to you. But once you get up higher ranks to, to higher ranks than masters, you realize oh, masters ain't that great. And they make a lot of mistakes too. But the thing is, is that it's a matter of whether or not you can, like, mentally accept this, right? You have to be able to accept the fact that there will be Smurfs. It's just an inevitability. But that's the thing. You can't control that either. You you can't control whether or not there's going to be Smurfs in your game. So, why get mad about that, right? Because it's like, if you're going to be getting mad about something that you can't control, then again, you probably shouldn't be grinding. Because there are lots of things you can't control when you're grinding, but the one thing you can't control is your own improvement. So if you use these Smurf as a litmus test to decide, am I good enough, right? Or like, not not, not so much, and am I good enough? Because that's like kind of like, if you get shit on, then it's like, oh well, I'm not good enough. I'll never be good enough. That that sucks. Um, you don't want that mentality. Um, but you just need to see it as like a challenge, right? That's the main thing. A challenge, right? See it as a chance to challenge yourself and see if you can, or at least like it, 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 it put it dips your toes in the water of what you might expect later on. You see, like that, that's the type of thing. Like it's kind of like a, a pre, a pretest. Let's let's say that. Sure, it's like a pretest, right? Um. Anyways, let's go on to the next part. Um. Now. Uh. Elo Hell. Now, I, I know what a lot of people will say. Oh, Elo Hell isn't real. And, um, I would kind of agree. But the thing is, is that there is, like, some validity to it if everybody is speaking about it. Like, um, we could also add, like, Loser's Q to this. I, I hate the idea of Loser's Q more than <laughs> Elo Hell, to be honest with you, but whatever. Um, here's the thing, right? Every rank is hard for you to get out of, right? Right. Every rank is hard for you to get out of. It's just not easy. It, it, like, within, like, sure, if you put a Reaper Friday queue. I don't know what's on Reaper Friday. <laughs> 
Um, wait, I want to see. Is the, am I missing questions here? No, I'm not. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so you, uh, like, if you put a GM player in a plat game, of course, they're just going to dominate. Um, but for you as a plat player, it's going to be tough for you to get out of plat because it's like you're, you're a plat player. It's, it's inevitable. Um, so, yeah, like, it, and just like we were saying with the 40 40 20, like, you're going to lose matches. It happens. Um, now, one thing that you can also consider, too, is that, yes, you'll have bad days of ranks, right? It just happens, right? Maybe you have a DC three times in a row. I'm not kidding, right? Um, I, like, <laughs> it's it, it sucks. It's really tilting. I understand. It feels like you just wasted your progress the other day that you made. It happens, but that's where it's like, again, you can't be focusing on your rank. Because again, it's very volatile. These things happen, right? You can't really focus on your rank knowing that tomorrow your internet can get like fucked and you're not going to have like good cues because you're um, DCing every single match, right? Or um, what well, am I saying? Good cues. I mean, like you're not you're you're not gonna have a good day of ranked because you're you're disconnecting every match, or maybe somebody else is disconnecting. Maybe you have a thrower. Maybe you just walk in tilted. <laughs> you just walk into your games tilted. It happens. So just don't don't put your don't put too much pressure on it, right? Uh, don't too much don't put too much pressure on yourself. Um, now this is probably the key thing out of this, right? The key thing is this: if okay, I'm gonna do this in blue, if if you cannot accept what you can't control, you probably don't want to grind. Right. Because the thing with grinding is that you're playing the game a lot, you're going to be exposed to a lot of variables, a lot of things that you weren't expecting. It just happens, right? Like, there, there's really just nothing that you can do about it, right? You can't do anything about ELO hell and being stuck in it, realistically. You can't do anything about that. The only thing, like, okay, so if there is actually an ELO hell where Jeff Kaplan is, like, sitting there watching your profile and purposely putting you into bad matches because you've been losing a lot, right? If there is, if that genuinely does exist, what can you actually do about it? Like, can you genuinely do something about it? No. No Jeff anymore, Sag. Or, yeah, smile, <laughs> sad. Ugh. Uh, yeah. Poor Jeff. Um. Aaron Keller, then. If Aaron Keller is actually is actively fucking up your matches, right? Um. Can you actually do anything about that? No, you can't, right? You, you can't do anything bad. Or you, you can't do anything in response to Aaron Keller throwing you into matches, like, that you are deeming as a loss, like, at the beginning, at the, like, at the, at the opening screen or whatever, right? Um, you can't do anything. The only thing that you can do is just accept the fact that you can only improve yourself, right? And hope for the day that you do get a good day of rank, then that's it. And the thing is, is that you do get pretty decent days of ranked, honestly. Like, you do get those games where you just go, like, 50-50 and you just don't win. That's fine. But it's like, if you're playing to improve, right, you're, you're gonna... You're gonna actually... And again, you're, you're not actually just playing to win. You're playing to improve. You're gonna... You're gonna actually see results, right, uh, over time. And that's the whole thing. Again, it's a long-term commitment, so it's not something that you're just going to get in a short period of time here. Uh, yeah, okay, so the, the, the one thing that... You, okay, so the, the, there, there's one thing. There, there is one constant, right? The, there, there's only one constant within your games. One constant. And that's you. Right? So if you can't control the loser's queue, if you can't control the elo hell, and that's getting to you. Stop, stop grinding. Like it's just not worth it, right? It's gonna be, it's gonna be mentally, dis like you're gonna be mentally distraught, dude. If you, if you get a DCer, and then the next match you gain like three SR, 
Because, like, I don't know why sometimes that does happen. You're gonna be tilted out of your fucking mind. Like, because you've been you're playing to win and to climb. And it's like, if you're playing to climb, you're not really... Like, whenever... If you're playing to go up this way, to, like, climb, every single time you go this way, you're gonna be freaking out. It's just inevitable. Right, so if you don't focus on something that's so volatile and you focus on something that's constant, you can give yourself better feedback, right? You can give, you have like actual feedback to the, or an actual response to the things that you are doing, right? Or like, um, and, and, and like you can manage your tilt much better because it's like, yeah, if you're playing like shit over and over again and you see it, sure, maybe you'll get a bit tilted, but I guarantee you won't get as tilted as like those people who like lose like three matches a, a game or that three matches a game. <laughs> yeah, as, as bad as like those people that have like the, the full day of losses, right? And they post about it on Reddit and they're just like, uh, I can't, I can't climb no matter what I do. Uh, I'm trying so hard. Uh. Like, <laughs> focus on yourself. Like that, that's all you can really do. As, as, as much as people have like probably jammed that down your throat, it's like, it's important to go into the specifics of like what focusing on yourself means and that doesn't just mean like oh you have to like um oh just your teammates never do anything wrong it's always you it's always your fault no it's not always your fault right sometimes your teammates do throw sometimes your teammates are shit it happens but that's not a constant that you can rely on to actually like that, that that's something that's not something reliable that you can focus on right so th there's no point in focusing on it if it's not a reliable thing that you can like change it, it um so now uh, another thing to consider too right uh, another point is um do you feel like you've wasted your time after playing a bad session now the reason i bring this up this is kind of something that was more pertaining to me specifically and i feel like it's something that maybe somebody might uh, resonate with i had an issue well first of all okay back in like season two, two three something around there i was a plat player and I was trying to climb, and my issue was that every single time I would play a match and lose, I tilted my brains out because I thought, well, why am I doing this if I could be spending time doing something else? I could be practicing soccer, I could be doing homework, I could be doing, um, I could be exercising in some other way, I could be, I could be teaching myself something new, I could be practicing my video editing. Um, and, and I realized what it was that was actually like making me feel like I wasted my time and it was because I didn't have a goal in mind with when I was playing I just wanted to win right so I actually um, shout out to IO Stux here um, I actually um, actually got a little bit of his help on this um, I, I asked him for some feedback on the notes that I took or uh, on the notes I wrote down. And one of the things that he said to me that stuck out was, um, or what he wrote to me, was, um, do you play to win or to play well? Right? And I could have definitely have used that <laughs> back in like season two or three, where I was so focused on winning that I didn't even take time to consider, am I actually playing good? Like, am I actually playing good? Because sometimes you feel like you land like a six-man shatter. I was like a Reinhardt main back then. Um, I would land a six-man shatter like once. And like, I just carry that feeling with me throughout the entire game. Like, oh my god, I'm fucking carrying. I don't know what to do. And it's like, but am I actually playing well? Right? And that's where it's like, if you want to feel like you don't waste your time, set objectives. So then your time... Your time gains meaning. Right? Inherently, it gains meaning. Even though it might be like a, a meaningless thing, where it's like, yeah, you maybe could be spending some time on something else that's maybe much more impactful for your life. This is still, like, at least making what you're doing valuable to yourself. Um, or not, like, not, not so much valuable to yourself, but like, um, it makes what you find valuable to yourself 
um, have more of a constructive, um, of a const I guess a constructive mentality, I guess you could say. Like, there's just more to work with, you know? Like, there's more to work with if you, um, it feels like your wasted time is more productive if you're achieving your goal. Even if you're getting worse at your goal, you at least know what it is that you're getting worse at, right? And there's there's something tangible that you can work with, right? Um, having something tangible to work with when you feel like you're wasting time, that's something that I felt like I definitely could have used when I was um, when I was a, a sapling and I was trying to learn Overwatch and I was uh, very fucking bad at it. I remember I went from um, <laughs> I was gonna hit diamond. I was at like 28 and 90 or something. And I was with this mentality like, oh, I'm gonna hit diamond. I'm gonna hit diamond. And I dropped down to like 2200, and I don't think I've ever been more angry in my life. Like I was so angry, and I was literally just like playing, hoping to win. I was kind of like I would duo with people, like trying to like find a carry and this and that, or like somebody I was like, ah, my bot teammates. <laughs> it's not a good look. Um, let's see, I'll, I'll actually write that down here. So, do you play to win or to play well? And sorry for my handwriting in advance. Well, no, it's kind of not in advance. I've been streaming for an hour and a half now. Um, I'm, I'm writing with a mouse, so I'm trying my best here. Um, now, the last thing to address, like the very last thing, uh, the tilt, and then this would be like the last point of the lecture, is I am not consistent. Now, a lot of people get tilted because they feel like they're not consistent enough. Like whether it, I think like aim is like the easiest example to like go with here. I'm gonna take a water break real quick. Hold on. Consistency, right? Consistency is something you, you, you don't want to seek it. Don't seek consistency, right? So with your aim, that's like probably like the, the easiest example because a lot of people will say like, oh, I whiff. Um, I, I whiff shots all the time. Um, I, I, there, there, yeah, there's way too many shots that I'm whiffing. Uh, I get myself into an opportunity where it's like, oh, I should be hitting these shots, but I'm just not, right? And that's tilting. The, the thing is that everybody whiffs, right? Everybody whiffs at some point. Th th there's a reason why pros, you'll generally see their, like, if they're, like, hitting, like, squishy. Like, okay, so there's a reason why pros, they don't have 100% uh, accuracy with their aim, right? Because it's, it's hard. Aiming isn't easy. Um, everybody whiffs, right? If consistency actually existed, right? Um, so, consistency consistency existed uh, the same teams the same teams would always be winning right right so you would think like uh, would always win right um, so you would think like Barcelona would always win the Champions League because back in 2011 they had the world's best team ever that's it. Or Brazil would always win the World Cup because they have the best World Cup team uh, in the history of World Cups, right? Like, they're just they're the best. Even with new players, they're just the best. Um, San Francisco Shock, they have, like, the same players for the most part. They have some new ones. They're consistent. They're, they, 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 if they're consistent, they're, they're just going to win everything, right? Because they're consistently the best. And it's clear that they're not, right? They, they, there are days where they don't, like, people whiff or plays or people make mistakes uh, th there would be no ex there would be no excitement from any sort of um, sporting event uh, if consistency does actually exist now this is what you actually need to be thinking about consistency right so instead of thinking of this right instead of seeking consistency what you need to seek right is this seek opportunities Sorry, seek more opportunities to mess up. Right? Um, th this is kind of like the, the, 
like a DPS mental. Uh, this is like the the mentality you have to have like when you're when you're a DPS player in particular. Sometimes you'll come up against a player who's just like object like you just feel like they're better than you instantly. But the thing is, is that it's really important to have a bit of an ego when you're um when you're a DPS player and you're like trying to improve. You have to have a bit of an ego because otherwise you're you're just going to be unconfident with every single matchup that you're in, and it's not great. But the the point is, is that it's like when you like um. When you whiff shots, you don't want to think, Oh, I'm whiffing shots. Oh my god, I'm whiffing. Oh, not again. You need to get yourself more opportunities so that you have more opportunities to mess up. Right? Because eventually you'll land a shot. So if you put yourself into positions where you can get more opportunities to be like landing more shots, even if you miss them, over the total, like, if, if we think of, like, the, the, the entire game as a timeline, and let's say every single red is when you went on a little, like, spree of whiffing, right? Um, if you're able to, like, get yourself more opportunities to whiff, so instead of that, let's say now here, so this is, like, game one, and then this is game two, right? So it's game two. And then you've given yourself more times to whiff, you're just inherently going to land more shots over time, right? Because you've given yourself more opportunities to whiff. You're giving yourself more opportunities to mess up. That's the whole thing. And that's where it's like a lot of... Uh, uh, when you watch higher ranked gameplay, you'll notice how often it is that like they people or uh, a pro player will create opportunities for themselves whether it's like weird angles or a different um or the timings or whatever right they try to create is they they maximize the amount of opportunities that they can give themselves so that if in the event that they miss which they do they also have more opportunities to actually land shots right and be more consistent it's the same exact thing with your abilities right if you give yourself more opportunities to like practice your abilities or to, to, to use your abilities, you're going to find... Huh. I've, I'm starting to land a bit more. Right? And then you'll end up getting a bit more... For one thing, you'll get a bit of a better idea of like how it is that you can actually land these abilities. But then not only that, it's like you're just giving yourself more opportunity to land them. So it's like they... It feels better. Right? As opposed to just like missing one. And then like having to wait all the way until here to like get an op another opportunity to redeem yourself. The, the thing is that like... Um, this is what I was saying, like, going into, like, um, pro pl uh, the DPS players with, like, egos. It's important to have an ego, because it's, like, if you lose a duel to a Widowmaker, a pro player, Kefri doesn't lose a duel to a Widowmaker, and then say, like, Oh, he's just better than me, I'm done! Oh, I'm giving up! Like, they don't, they don't just give up. He says, oh, man, I got shit on. That was a good shot. Now I'm gonna shit on him next. And that's it. You just have to, you have to, like, that's it. You have to create another opportunity for yourself, otherwise you're never gonna succeed, right? You, you just have to keep on looking for opportunities to succeed, and the more times that you give yourself opportunities to succeed, the more likely that it is that you're gonna actually, um, the, the, the more, the more times you're gonna have to actually, like, get value, rather than whiff, and, like, complain about the fact that you're not consistent. The, the thing is that, again, so if we wrap this up, it's, it's, you don't want to be looking for consistency, you want to be looking for more opportunities to mess up, so then as a result, you inherently have more attempts to land, or to hit, or to succeed, right? Okay, so that's pretty much the end of this lecture. Uh, if you have any questions that you'd like answered, or if you feel like I didn't elaborate on something, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. Or you can join my Discord and ask me any questions that you have. You can also uh, talk with my students who have also talked to this, uh, talked about uh, this stuff with. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like. Uh, if you'd like to get a private session of your own, uh, join my Discord server and all the info uh, regarding rates um is in there and uh yeah that's essentially that if you want to get notified on my uploads as well or for when i'm streaming that's also available in my discord and uh thank you everyone for coming out and thank you for watching <laughs>